Lessons and welcome to Seasoning Education and Knowledge for Negroes Part 1. Remember, the conversion of new Negroes into plantation laborers, a process called breaking in, required always a mingling of delicacy and firmness. Some planters distributed their new purchases among the seasoned households, thus delegating the task largely to the veteran slaves. Alrich Bonnell Phillips, PhD, and this is from the book American Negro Slavery, a survey of the supply, employment, and control of Negro labor as determined by the plantation regime, published 1918. And from James O. Kelly in 1789, the ships that conveyed these unhappy people could often be distinguished from other vessels by the sharks that followed them. Those voracious monsters preyed upon the poor Africans. The living are conveyed to the seasoning islands, so called, where numbers expire. Their wretched survivors are branded like horses and cattle, shamefully examined a second time, and then brought out as good, sellable property. And this is from the book Essay on Negro Slavery, published 1789. And this is a good lesson if you are one of those gullible people following and believing Dan Calloway who is working for the slave master who is telling you that there was nothing like slave ships. The only difference between the slave ships and ordinary passenger ships was that the ships were designed to carry the negro slaves. They had more military men armed with guns and they were specially designed to do that. Education or seasoning when the slave master brought his education and religion to the Negroes, did you not wonder why he did that when it was a capital offense to teach a Negro to read and write during the slave trade? When a Negro slave is first captured and exported, do you think the slave master just pushed them into the plantation and they start working for him? If the barracoons metamorphosed into prisons, and the slave hunters and slave drivers metamorphosed into the armed forces like the Nigerian army and police you see today, where do you think the school system came from? Who do you think draws up the academic curricula in countries that were in Negro land and Guinea, places like Nigeria, where children are thought that the slave hunters were their forebears? Who do you think drew up that curriculum and who do you think selected the books that are recommended for children to read in that area. The Real Corporates Have you been following our videos and also read some of the comments the Slave Masters YouTube allow through? Do you read comments like how the books we reference could have been written by the Europeans? Do you also observe that such comments never reference the ones written by Africans and have you wondered why they do not also provide what they consider the correct perspective so we can all see how it is different from what the books they dismiss as written by Europeans are saying? Who and who do you think were responsible for the brutal transatlantic and trans-Saharan slave trades? From slave trade to colonialism When the slave master elected to replace the slave trade with colonialism, do you think the difference between both was much? Have you ever tried to examine how colonialism differs from Negro slave trade? In the slave trade, the Negroes belong to the slave master as chattel. In colonialism, the Negroes and their land both belong to the slave master as chattel as well. How does the law during the slave trade differ from the law during colonialism and today? How about how laws in countries in what was Negro land and Guinea compare with the slave master's laws, be it then or today. From freedom to slavery, have you ever imagined how the slave trade started? When the slave master and his accomplices claim, albeit falsely, that it could have been Negroes selling themselves or Africans selling other Africans, have you ever tried to analyze it in detail? How did the Negroes transition from liberty and freedom to slavery and oppression? How could the slave master kidnap an adult, man or woman, from Negro land and get them to walk like horses and other beasts in the slave master's plantation? Ever heard the terms seasoning 
and breaking in as it concerns the Negroes in bondage. Have you wondered what else the term breaking in is used for and where? Do you remember the break the will to resist in the Willie Lynch letter and how it says that the breaking process is the same for the horse and the n-word only slightly varying in degrees and let us not forget that the Willie Lynch letter was purportedly written circa 1712 and we want you to compare what that letter said as a way to break the negroes with what the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices are doing in Biafra and Ambazonia today and connect the dots. And on a side note, on Simon Ipa and the Biafra struggle, did you see when African Americans were recruited by the slave master and his accomplices to protest against dismantling Nigeria and deny the masculines by the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices going on then and now? And the question becomes, who do you think was responsible for that and whose money was used to pay them? Remember they were paid as much as $500 for that protest or demonstration. And remember the reason the slave master is able to use either so-called African Americans or the Negroes back in what was Negro land and Guinea and today West and Central Africa up to East Africa against themselves is because he believes that the Negroes are not intelligent enough to know when they are being deceived. Remember, he considers the Negroes as not being human. And this is visible when you consider in greater details how he is able to use the Negroes against themselves. And this is similar to what you see them using somebody like Samanipa to do against supposedly his own people today. And to better understand the idiocy in Samanipa and his subterfuge against the IPOB and Biafra freedom struggle. He still claims that he is being loyal to Namdekano and the Biafra struggle even when it is clear to the blind and audible to the deaf that he is sabotaging the struggle and blackmailing the IPOB leadership and every part of that movement to the advantage of the enemy which is the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. Above all, the biggest part of it is diverting attention from the fact that the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices kidnapped somebody that did nothing to them in the name of the colonel, but he is instead blaming those he claims are IPOB leadership that sold him. Who did they sell him to? The slave master and his accomplices. Who is Simon Ipa working for? The slave master and his accomplices. So you saw how he is carefully shielding the slave master and his accomplices who are the real culprits and then blaming the members of the DOS as the culprits such that in future generations to come will now be reporting that the leadership of IBUB or the DOS sold Nam the Kano without talking about the slave master especially the British and their slave hunting accomplices especially the Fulanese who constitute what is called Nigerian government today who are the real culprits that kidnapped and abducted somebody that did nothing to them just because he asked for Biafra freedom. So if you are one of those that are still thinking that Simon Ekba is genuinely looking for any Biafra freedom, you shouldn't be watching this video. It means you are not intelligent enough as a human being to understand what is going on. As you can very easily see the same history of how they finished the slave trade and blamed it on the victims who were the Negroes is what you are allowing them to repeat today using Simon Ekba who unfortunately doesn't even know and is not intelligent enough to realize that he is sabotaging the struggle even though we are sure he knows what he is doing. And so permit us to ask you, are you one of those still in doubt that Simon Ekba is a fifth columnist in IPOB and working for the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices against the freedom struggle in Biafra? Are you yet to observe that Simon Ekba has been blackmailing Biafrans more than the enemy? From Unnandekano to his wife, to his family, IPOB itself, ESN, Radio Biafra, IPOB leadership, DOS, name it, all have been blackmailed by Simon Epa. If you have studied the slave master and his code manuals, that is both the Bible and the Quran, you will understand what is going on. However, if you are still a Muslim or a Christian as a Negro, you may not be able to understand them anyway. The slave master's God and his Allah. The slave master's God and his Allah are both not the real creator of heaven and earth but merely creations of the slave master and his accomplices. Remember the slave master acknowledges that 
he does not know how the world came into existence so the genesis story is actually a lie and a little look at the slave master's deity god and allah which are supposedly omnipresent and omni knowing and omni everything but if we looked at exodus 30 11 to 16 we will see that the slave master's deity god needs humans to conduct a census to know how many people in a particular place remember he was not even talking about the whole world but only a tiny fraction of it which ordinarily from basic common sense if the slave master's god or his allah were the creators of heaven and earth they should have been the ones telling their children or their prophets how many people there was on earth it won't need a census to know how many people. This is like a man who does not know how many children he has, but at the same time claiming to be all-knowing and claiming to know everything. And a quick reference to the Holy Bible containing the Old Testament and the New, newly translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently compared and revised by His Majesty's special commandment, appointed to be read in churches imprinted at London by Robert Baker, Anno Domini 1611. And here we see that, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou makest the sum of the children of Israel, after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague amongst them, when thou numberest them, this they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary but our question here is how could the creator of heaven and earth not know how many people was in a place so much so that his so-called prophet was to count them before he knows and above all if we may ask this is only talking about only a fraction not all humanity but if you read between the lines, you will see how the subtle slave master made it possible for the Negroes to be contributing their hard-earned money to him through the churches and the mosques. And also from the Al-Quran of Muhammad, now called Holy Quran, Surah 2, 2 to 1. So a believing slave is of more value than a free infidel. And we ask how? And we reference the Al-Quran of Muhammad, translated out of Arabic into French by the Sieur de Raya, Lord of Malaysia, and resident for the King of France at Alexandra, and newly Englished for the satisfaction of all the desire to look into the Turkish vanities. London printed Anno Domini 1649. And here we see that, Marry not women that believe in many gods until they believe in one sole God. A slave that is a true believer is of more value than a free infidel, notwithstanding she is beautiful. So here we see that the slave master's Allah is talking about a creature he supposedly created. Remember the slave master's deities, both God and Allah are men. And please do not get us wrong here. Nobody has ever seen the creator of heaven and earth before. So you cannot determine what its gender could be and above all spirits do not have form further here we see that it continues to say infidels shall be summoned to hellfire and god called men to paradise and to his mercy through his mere good pleasure and declared to them his commandments perhaps they will remember them and so again here we see that the slave master Allah is guessing he doesn't know the future which proves beyond any reasonable doubts that the slave master's manuals of slavery are both works of men. And for the records, please bear in mind that we are reading from the Al-Quran of Muhammad that existed during the slave trade and not whatever translations you may have today. For example, a modern day translation may read something different because the slave master is a subtle base and we see that it says something like marry not the women who associate others with Allah in his divinity until they believe for a believing slave girl is better than a free respectable woman who associates others with Allah in his divinity even though she might please you you see that they have tweaked it a bit to change that meaning that he used to carry as at that time 
That's how subtle the slave master is.